standby I'm in my school bus but it's shut down kids are all at vocational school and I'm waiting until they get out and I've got a little bit of time to kill so I wanted to say something about uh, what kind of a what kind of a breeder you should buy a puppy from and uh, I, I'm going to be saying all this stuff off the top of my head, so I can't really say for sure if I won't forget some of it. But in my opinion, um, uh, there's, there's some red flags you should watch for. And it, a lot of it's been from experiences that I've had uh, when I was younger. But anyway, you should, um, like when you're looking for a puppy... I know you have to look online, but you should avoid stuff like Craigslist ads, things like that, because uh, just for instance, when I was just getting ready to buy a Bougie in Paris, my husband was searching all over, you know, looking at websites and different things, and uh, he, he found a litter of puppies and they looked good, you know. They were from down in Tennessee, and the lady that owned them would not let us come to see them. She kept saying that they were at the farm and, you know, her farm, and it was way away from Nashville. And she had talked to us on the phone. I mean, it wasn't through text messaging or anything, but she would talk to us on the phone, and she would just, you know, kind of push us and all that. And she had the whole litter still available. I can't remember if her price was cheaper or not, maybe they were $1,900, I don't know, but she did not have any way for us to meet with her right then. She claimed to work for a lawyer, which I don't believe that either. I think that she was just saying that to make us think that she was more uh, of an ethical person, and that if she could work for a lawyer, she might be an ethical person. So uh, then we had uh, made an appointment with her to come and see the puppies anyway she said we were going to meet her at her mother's or something in another town which i thought was okay you know meeting somebody at their mother's that you know that might be safe and my husband was going with me but on the way i told her we had some other puppies we were going to look at we were going to stop off because she kept texting us and saying when are you going to get here when are you going to get here when a few days before every day we try to make an appointment she said well i don't have time to bring the puppies in and and to my mom's and all this stuff, you know. So we ended up buying uh, Paris first. And I, she kept saying, when you coming, when you coming? So I texted her and said, we have already purchased a puppy. I expected her to get rude about it. And she said, thank you. And that was the end of it. So she might have been afraid. But So that is a recent doodle experience that I had. You don't want to buy a puppy from someone that you cannot go see where it was born and raised. And... um they need to provide you some kind of information on the puppies. I asked her if they were CKC registered, which I'm doing my best to get ours done that way. They say we can. And uh, just so we'll have a starting of a bloodline for our puppies to be CKC registered and Gamma registered, which is a golden doodle registra registration. It's a little bit more strict, but I'm working on that. Anyway... So she would not pretty much give us any information. But the pictures of the puppies, they all looked pretty. They all looked like they had wavy coats and all that. Okay, so uh, when we got Bougie in Paris, Bougie was the first one I chose. And 
that girl, young lady, had a big, beautiful home, and the doodles were born in there with from her house dog, and uh, she had pictures of the, of the dad, which he was a next door neighbor or something, of the of that was that they owned their dog. He was a poodle, and they gave us pictures. They showed us pictures of everything but the breeding <laughs> that they took pictures of, you know. And their kids handled the, the dogs, you know, from the time they were born. They had, you know, smaller children, but not very small children. So the, the puppies were handled a lot. And um, they were happy to answer any question we had. They sent pictures of the progress of them growing up. Those are all things that you would like to look for. I mean, we even have when they were just born. Um, that's what I had from Roxy, that lady. We didn't buy from her because she just wasn't going to have a litter till 2023 again. But Roxy came from a house where they bred their house dog. And I've got pictures of that and videos of that on my channel. But, um, I mean, we constantly got updates during the labor and the delivery and everything. And you, so you want that and you want to expect if you want to buy the breeding rights to the puppies, that's a new thing or a thing I learned in the last few years. If you want the breeding rights to the puppies, you're going to pay more. You can pay like $4,500 for breeding rights. We did not, but that can happen. So be ready for that. And it sounds crazy that you have to actually pay for the breeding rights, but I feel like there's a reason for that. I think they want people to not buy a puppy just to keep it pregnant and make money off of it and then whatever, you know, and I don't want that either. And also you should ask all kinds of questions from your breeder and ask them if they have ever turned down someone buying one of their puppies. And they should have at least one because everybody's not going to qualify. Uh, for instance, now all this is things that I did and I asked but when I bought mine, but you want to know that um, they have taken the puppies to the vet. The moms had vet care. The dads had vet care. Uh, the people, you know, made sure they did everything that they could do to have a healthy mom and dad because that goes to the puppies. And I, I don't recommend you even get one that's like born in a building with a bunch of other dogs. One place we went, a lady was saying that, you know, or a person that, that I kind of know, uh, she's told me about a lady that raised golden doodles because we were looking for a really good quality golden doodle since Aaron couldn't have a litter of puppies for us until the 2023. And this lady had clean facilities, but again, she knew we were coming. We made an appointment. So she had a couple days to get ready, but she had her doodles out in this barn and it was clean and they were in stalls. And I mean, she probably had 20 moms out there and they were so starved to be petted. They were just crying, like just moaning and crying and so excited to see us. And we petted, we petted them all. And she was out there with us and it didn't stink. And, you know, it looked like they tried to clean it up. But I felt so bad for those dogs because I, I know you could not possibly, unless you invited a classroom full of students in, you couldn't possibly um, keep those dogs need to be, inter you know, to interact with people. You could not possibly do that. One person or two people couldn't do that. So I didn't want to get, but her dogs were also groomed. They all were groomed and she couldn't have done that in two days. They were all you know, their hair was good, but their hair felt stiff to me. Either they were dirty or their hair was not healthy because my doodle's hair is like people's hair. It's soft. Even Roxy, she's uh, three and a half years old and her hair is really soft. It might be because they don't get them brushed every day, but they, you know, so they shave them down and let the hair grow back out. So they don't have to brush them every day. That would be a big job too, to brush that many doodles every day. But I brush mine every day. Now, mine, uh, to be transparent, in the last three days, I have not brushed them, but they went to the groomer just the other day. So I'm giving myself a three or four day break, but we're getting right back on the wagon probably tonight. And uh, well, anyway, so uh, I wouldn't buy 
a puppy from that. And I would also be sure you check their belly and see if you can see a hernia on their belly. Now, a lot of these breeders will say, well, you can fix that surgically easily. And they'll give you like 50 bucks off the price of the puppy. And I, but I, I don't know. I feel like they should fix that. And that's just me. But I feel like they should fix that themselves. I'll tell you what, it's getting hot in here. Hang on a minute. They should fix that before they want to want you to purchase a puppy. And um, I'm gonna open these doors. It's getting hot. Um, so I think feel like that's a, a a thing to look for is the make sure they don't have a, a hernia, and then ask them about the shedding. If they're an F1 or F1B or F2B or whatever, that'll be whether their coat's wavy or really tight curled or whatever. You can go by that mostly, but th that's even, you know. I would look for that and I would ask the breeder all kinds of questions about any health issues that the parents have had. And it'd be great if they've had health testing done on the moms and the dads. Now, if you use a dad that's just a, a stud dog that might be a little bit hard but now with me i'm gonna find one i'm looking i've got a while to do it over a year to do it and i'm gonna find one and that if if i like how they look and everything's good on them i'm gonna see if they'll let me health test the dog and i'll pay for it the 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 dad because i don't want to own the stud dog i might want to keep back a puppy i don't think i will but I might want to keep back a puppy, one more puppy to have for three in my breeder program because I'm not going to uh, breed them very many times. I'm not going to do that. I just want to breed quality dogs. Wow, I keep dropping my phone. It's hard to do this. And then um, you don't want to ever buy one from somebody that's cheap, too cheap because if they're too cheap, they, there's a lot of reasons that could be cheap. Those dogs could, the mom could have been stolen. The puppies and the mom could have been stolen. Um, the puppies might, they might say, well, we are gonna let you buy this cheap, but we don't, we're gonna let you take it to the vet. You don't want any of that because your heart's gonna get broken possibly if you don't uh, make sure these dogs are as healthy as they can be when you buy them. Golden Doodles are super good family pets. They're they're gentle, they're loving. They don't like to be away from their people. They're like, they literally become a, a member of your family. And we kind of structure our life and activities around our dogs because they have become our family like our kids were when they were little, you know, they depend on us. So um, you don't want to get all involved with a family member dog and then have it die from some disease because somebody didn't treat it right or feed it right. You want to ask them what kind of food they feed them. We feed Hill Science Diet on our puppies. So um, that's a really good food. I've, he I've heard Purina Pro Plan's good, but I, I, in the past, I, when I was very young, people didn't feed Purina. And I know that's been many years ago, but I'm just, the vet sells Hill Science Diet, so we switched to that because the puppies were on that. Roxy and the Bulldogs always ate um, Taste of the Wild salmon because the Bulldogs had allergies. But we don't use that anymore because Roxy got to where she didn't even want to eat it. And she just didn't like it. She'd sneak in there and try to eat the puppy's food. So we changed her to adult science diet. And the puppies are on sensitive stomach Hill Science Diet because they do have sensitive tummies. They get car sick easy. That was just a side note. Okay, on the breeder thing, you need to make sure that you find out whether they allow you to have breeding rights at all. Some of them don't let you have breeding rights no matter how much you pay, which I am 100% against because if I'm gonna pay that much money for a dog, I want the breeding rights. But that being said, everybody should be breeding dogs. I'm taking already three years and another two to learn everything I need to to be an excellent dog breeder and I'm not going to be have a large amount of dogs these are my house dogs they live in the house with me they're loved by us they're socialized they go to town with us and uh, right now we don't take the puppies to town much because they get car sick but we've got medication from the vet for that 
So if there's any kind of information that they'd like to share with you from the parents uh, on the vet, visits from the parents, that'd be a good idea. Um, there's a lot of things you can look, look up on the internet about uh, what you want to look for in a dog breeder. Um, it'd be good if they had children that could be around the puppies that you buy from them that were around there where they were handled. It'd be good if they had a curriculum like they, I'm going to put mine through uh, learning to hear a vacuum cleaner run. I'm going to potty train them. Um, I always say, though, that doesn't mean the dog can get up and open the door. You've got to get up and let them out. Uh, they're going to be crate trained. They're going to be trained to, if they walk across certain noises, you know. I'm sorry about this camera shaking. You know, if, like if they walk across paper or, you know, a furnace noise or something like that, I'm going to try to introduce them to all kinds of textures and sounds so that that'll make it uh, a little bit easier on the people that buy the puppies. That's the kind of things you want to ask a breeder. And I'll probably have more things on another video, but this is already getting to be 15 minutes, and uh, I just feel like that that's plenty enough time right now. But your main thing is... Do not, it'd be great to go by word of mouth, somebody that has already bought puppies from them. I won't have that luxury, but I do have the luxury that people know me and they know how I am about my dogs. And I've always had dogs and I've had people write college papers about me and my knowledge of dogs, which shocked me. But the only reason I have any knowledge is just because of me raising and loving dogs. That's just how that is. And I love to learn, but you need to do that make sure that they're good people they know, that they know dogs don't buy a dog that's been shut up in a building don't buy one out of sympathy because it's been raised horrible because your heart's just going to get broke I did that too and uh, that dog came home and it turned out it had a water head it was uh, uh, encephal no I don't remember what they call that anyway it's a water head the water stays on the brain and uh, that lady had her shut up in a building out there and that's a long story it's 20 years ago but uh, just be super careful. Check the people out. And make sure they're reputable. They don't necessarily have to have their dogs registered, but it'd be a good idea for there would be DNA testing to tell you they are golden doodles. They are health tested. Mine are health tested and they're DNA tested. The health testing hasn't come back yet. And then I'm going to have um, the, uh, the x-rays done on their joints for hip dysplasia. Everything I can test for, I'll be testing their eyes. The vets will have to do that, but you need to, if you're going to buy a doodle, get you a dog or any dog, get one that's been health tested so that to the best of your ability, you know, you're buying a healthy dog from the people and then see what kind of health guarantees they have. Um, sometimes they'll give you a little bit of your money back or offer you another puppy from another litter. And uh, don't think it's weird if they want to uh, ask you for a non-refundable deposit because Usually, doodle puppies will sell before they're ever born, and you don't want to hold a puppy, and then somebody decides they don't want it, and then you got to give them back their money and try to figure out how to place this puppy. You, that's It's very common for people to have to pay a deposit. I had to, a non-refundable deposit, and that's definitely going to be what I, what I do. And then um, it's not weird for a breeder to want to ask you questions about, if you can afford to have this dog, if you can afford to take it to the vet, they may want you to uh, report to them through all their main vet visits. There's a whole lot to it. They might want to know that you're taking them to the vet for a certain period of time. And um, so that's something a breeder might want from you. But that'll be another video. So it's getting hot in here. I'm gonna have to start the bus and get my air conditioner going. So you have a blessed day and uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a lot of golden doodles, so that's why I named my channel Holy Golden Doodles because it's like, holy cow, but I love it. I love it so much to have all these sweet doodles because they are family, and they're so loving and sweet, and they're so smart. You're never going to regret it, I don't think. So I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.